a regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. I'm so glad you're with me on the program today. We've got got a busy show for you. We're going to be talking about a school district in Texas that is taking a substantive step towards protecting these students under their care. Plus, we've got an update for you on an armed citizen story that is now turned into a recidivist report. Yeah, we'll get to those stories and a lot more uh, coming up here in just one second. But before we do, I want to share with you a wonderful company and a new sponsor for our program located in the center of the military universe, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. At Defender Ammunition, you'll never wait weeks for ammo. Whatever you see on the website is actually in stock and ships the same day. This is a pretty patriotic bunch. They source every component they can from U.S. companies to ensure that your dollars are going to support companies right here at home. Yes, Defender Ammunition has exceptionally priced, high-quality ammo, but they're also great folks who fight for the defenders of our country. Everyone employed at Defender Ammunition is either former military or military adjacent, and that's why they give back whatever they can to support charities for our beloved service members. I've had the chance to fire Defender Ammunition to the field, and I can testify that they're the kind of company with quality products and American values that you'll want to support. The gun industry seems massive, but it gets much smaller when finding people with common American values. And if you want to try out some of their ammo for free, Check out their brass exchange program. They encourage customers to trade in fired brass in exchange for a gift card. And as you can imagine, people love this. Visit DefenderAmmunition.com and get to know a gem of an ammunition company in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Check out all of the details on the brass exchange and more. And be sure to thank them for supporting this program. And go on to save on high quality manufactured ammunition. All right. So let's talk about what's going on in Texas, where the uh, school board in the city of San Marcos uh, has now decided that they are going to adopt the state's school marshal plan. Now, Texas actually has a couple of options for school districts that want to have an armed school presence uh, or an armed presence on, on a school campus beyond school resource officers. You've got the uh, school marshals and you've got the school guardian program. The school marshal program is a little bit more intensive, uh, about 74 districts. Uh, in Texas, currently utilize the uh, Marshall program. I think that there are several dozen others that use the Guardian program. San Marcos is going with the uh, school marshal plan. So they're going to be hiring uh, basically armed civilians for every elementary school in the district, eight elementary schools. Uh, they will be serving those individuals as, uh, again, school marshals. The responsibilities would include patrolling the campuses, performing safety checks and audits, as well as conducting safety training drills. The Guardian program, as opposed to the Marshall program, is really more about having that armed school staff as a first line of defense in case of an active assailant attack on a school campus. They're not out there performing safety checks and audits. They're not going to be patrolling the campus. They're really just there, uh, you know, to serve in addition to their daily duties uh, within the school district, again, as that first line of defense. This is a little bit different. Uh, in fact, the San Marcos School District is going to be replacing. The school resource officers that are currently at each of these elementary schools with a school marshal. Um, according to school board documents, the uh, school marshals would, quote, in essence, take the place of hired off duty officers who presently reside on campus. They will not wear uniforms, but they will carry a concealed handgun and be a school district employee. A marshal's primary role is to engage and protect during an active attack. So before any of these school district employees could be hired on as marshals, they would have to have certification from the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement. Uh, they also have to take part in regular training through the San Marcos Police Department. Uh, San Marcos Police Chief Stan Standridge uh, spoke during the uh, school board meeting this week uh, in favor of this idea. There were, obviously, as you can imagine, uh, some critics, including a woman named Bonnie Beavers, who is a youth pastor at the uh, San Marcos United Methodist Church, a volunteer for these school districts as well, uh, who said, quote, as a family and youth pastor, I spend my days working with students in San Marcos. I cannot count the number of conversations we've had about their fears of guns on the school campuses. Having armed law enforcement officers on the school campuses adds a sense of safety and security to their mind. They can see who is there to protect them. In arming school district employees and asking them to remain anonymous and carry a concealed weapon, we are adding to the anxiety of our students. I got to say, I, I don't think that Ms. Beavers gives those students enough credit. Uh, again, if the presence of uniformed school resource officers is a comfort and a relief to them, then letting those students know that you've got uh, armed, trained, vetted, 
I won't say volunteers because they're getting paid to do this, but uh, individuals who have, again, undergone uh, training uh, and are ready to serve as that first line of defense, that too should be an aid and comfort to them. Now, I will confess, I personally would prefer that uh, if districts are going to take these steps, that they keep those school resource officers in place. The the more, the merrier. You know, we've talked with uh, uh, James Eric Dietz of the Homeland Security Institute at Purdue University, who's done extensive research on the best way to stop an active shooter attack on a school campus. And what his research has found is that if you have a school resource officer who's there on campus who can pursue and engage the assailant, while you have armed school staff who are sheltered in place behind locked doors, prepared to defend their classroom if that killer comes inside, uh, that the attack stops uh, as quickly as possible with as few lives lost as possible. Any armed response uh, is good. The faster you can get to that attacker and stop the uh, assailant, the better, right? And when seconds count, a police response time of even six or seven minutes is far too long to wait. Um, But personally, I would have preferred to see the uh, San Marcos School District keep those school resource officers in addition to adopting the uh, Guardian program. According to Standridge, though, um, he says that he, too, agrees that the best solution would be to have more uniformed school resource officers on the district campus. But he says the city doesn't have the resources to make it happen, mainly due to swift population growth in the city that has contributed to an increase in violent crime. He said, quote, even if I had the additional officers, we would not assign them to campuses. Why? Because we need them in the field responding to 911 to mitigate this remarkable increase in violent crime. So it sounds like uh, in San Marcos, they are doing what they can to uh, keep the kids safe there on campus, despite the uh, objections of some of the uh, residents there. I think this is going to be a a good plan going forward. Again, not the ideal solution. uh, And hopefully those school resource officers can return to campus. But uh, having these marshals in place is definitely going to be of a benefit. Uh, It is far better than simply pulling those school resource officers out and having no response whatsoever Uh, on these elementary schools in San Marcos, Texas. So congratulations to the school board for taking a a good step forward. And I hope that other districts, not only across the state of Texas, but around the country, follow suit as well. Now let's turn our attention to today's Armed citizen story, our good deed of the day, and our recidivist report. Actually, before we do, there is something we really have to think about. What is happening with the banks? It is literally crazy. Can you imagine what this is going to do to the retirement savings of America? Now, I want to tell you what I heard from Augusta Precious Metals. Gold buying is on fire right now because people want gold IRAs to protect their retirement savings. And get this, if you have 100000 plus saved for retirement, Augusta will pay you in pure gold to learn how gold IRAs can protect you. That's a big deal. A pure gold coin for free. Reach out to Augusta Precious Metals today and learn how you can get started with gold. Don't let bank figures get you down. Get this free gold and get some peace of mind. Just call 855-222-4997 to learn whether gold can help protect your retirement and get your free gold coin. That's Augusta Precious Metals at 855-222-4997. Again, 855-222-4997. So I mentioned that uh, we've got a armed citizen story that's now turned into a recidivist report. We'll get to that in just one second. Before we do, though, today's actual armed citizen story from Mobile, Alabama, where police are investigating the shooting of a home intruder. And as it turns out, neighbors say this guy had apparently gone into other homes before he was fatally shot by uh, one armed resident. This was on uh, Rachel Drive in West Mobile. Uh, as uh, WPMI in Mobile uh, describes it, it's part of a subdivision made up of neat brick homes and well-manicured lawns. But Tuesday night, I guess early Wednesday morning, just after 1 a.m., shots rang out at uh, one of those homes. Police said that a man was killed by a homeowner during a break-in. Uh, the uh, TV station, uh, WPMI, uh, spoke to a couple of homeowners in the area, including one who just moved in a couple of months ago. She said they're surprised at what happened. She says it's a little unnerving to know what happened so close and to know that other people were involved And it happened in multiple houses right here. Yeah, as it turns out, according to neighbors, the home where the shooting occurred was not the only home that the uh, intruder may have visited that night. NBC 15 spoke with another homeowner who did not want to be identified, who said that she woke up around 1.15 to discover that intruder actually inside her home. She says he was wearing a mask, had opened her bedroom door, had opened the door to her laundry room, but they managed to wiggle out through a doggy door when her pets started barking. 
Um, down the street, another homeowner says that uh, uh, they also saw three people carrying what appeared to be pillowcases on one of their security cameras. Now, WPMI says there's no word from investigators that they believe that there were others involved. Uh, and again, they have not uh, released a lot of details about the uh, intruder or the break-in other than to identify the intruder as 31-year-old Ryan Terrell, saying that he had attempted to break into the victim's residence and was shot in the process. He was transported to the hospital later to come to his injuries, but the police haven't said if there were others potentially involved uh, or whether or not Terrell was connected to these uh, other break-ins that same night that neighbors have reported. We'll keep our eyes on the story and to bring you any more details as they become available. Uh, now on to our recidivist report. I got to tell you, I, I saw this headline, and I shouldn't be surprised anymore. Not after all this time of of covering the sweetheart please deals and the, the problems with our criminal justice system. You might remember uh, a couple months ago, we talked about this defensive gun use in Des Moines, Iowa, where a woman who um, I think was an apartment manager or a, a hotel manager uh, in downtown had her kids at work with her and a homeless couple, um, Lori Potter and a guy named Michael Ross, tried to steal her kid uh, while she's there at work. They had uh, they were at the door of this apartment building, um, waving at her young son who was at work with her. Uh, Shay Lindbergh, who's the manager of the Hubble Tower Apartments, thought that the uh, couple were there to apply for jobs. So she opens the door and then Lori Potter uh, allegedly told Shay Lindbergh, give me your kid, uh, saying that uh, I- I'm his mom. I'm his mom. And then she grabbed her son's arm and tried to take the boy away. Lindbergh was legally carrying a firearm. She drew the weapon. She told the two to leave. They did, after dropping her child's arm, uh, and a uh, police officer was able to arrest them a short time later. No shots fired. Nobody injured. Thankfully, everybody was okay, and the pair were arrested. Um, Again, this was four months ago, more than four months ago. And the Des Moines Register actually took the time to follow up this story. And what they are reporting is not good. Skywalk child stealing criminal case in Des Moines at a standstill. Yeah. So as it turns out, one of the two defendants in this case, uh, both defendants, by the way, have had their preliminary hearings. But the Des Moines uh, Register says both cases have now run into delays. Lori Potter, the uh, 56 year old woman who was arrested, um, was found to be, quote, suffering from a mental disorder, which prevents her from appreciating the charges, understanding the proceedings, or assisting effectively in her own defense. That according to a judge. Uh, Judge Jeffrey Farrell also said that uh, Potter, quote, poses a danger to the public peace and safety and refuses to cooperate in treatment. So he ordered her to be treated at the Iowa Medical and Classification Center, which is the primary correctional medical facility. Uh, And then if she, you know, improves... Potentially, she could face charges. If not, then potentially she could be confined to an institution. But for months, she's just been stuck in limbo. Because as the Des Moines Register writes, the Department of Corrections has limited capacity for competency restoration treatment, making it a bottleneck that frequently causes lengthy case delays. In one Polk County murder case, the defendant was ordered to receive competency treatment in October of 2022. Okay, now this is a murder case, right? One of the most serious charges that you would think the courts would be interested in. So October of last year, this defendant, Eric Strickland, ordered to receive competency treatment in October. In January, his attorney goes to the court and says, hey, um, there are 42 people on the wait list. And my client is number 36. Two months later, two months after a judge ordered this treatment. A murder suspect's attorney says, I don't know when my client's going to be able to receive it. According to the Des Moines Register, it was not until April, this month, that Strickland was finally admitted for treatment. And again, he's facing a murder charge. Lori Potter, probably going to get, you know, put bumped back down on that list as more serious crimes and uh, potentially more serious offenders are arrested and also face competency hearings. As of April 19th, Potter remains in the Polk County Jail. Her competency hearing has been postponed repeatedly and is currently set for May the 10th. 
Now, the gentleman that was arrested with Lori Potter, Michael Ross, uh, according to the Des Moines Register, his competency was not questioned. But on April 3rd of this month, uh, Judge Farrell approved him for pretrial release after prosecutors and attorneys agreed that he should be permitted to seek inpatient treatment at an addiction recovery facility. So we're going to let you out of jail so you can go and get treatment. Got to show up. Okay, I will. No, he didn't. On Monday, pretrial release services reported to the court that Ross has not gone to the agreed-on facility for treatment, that they do not have any records of him as a patient. He is also not living at the men's shelter that he identified as his current residence. He provided no phone or email address where he can be reached. The pretrial officer wrote, quote, his current location is not known. So he took off. Farrell, the judge overseeing the case on Tuesday, revoked Ross's pretrial release. A little late for that. Issued a warrant for his arrest. He is uh, currently scheduled for trial on August the 10th. You know, again, we talk about the failures of the criminal justice system on a daily basis here on this program. And here's a perfect example of this. The institutions that we rely on to keep the criminal justice system functioning semi-smoothly, not even, not even really smoothly, but just semi-smoothly, are failing. And yet gun control activists, they don't want to fix those failures. They don't want to address the broken system. Instead, they want to make it even worse by slapping more gun control laws on the books. Uh, again, I don't know what's going to happen with Farrell or Ross. It's entirely possible that, that both of these individuals will escape any legal consequences whatsoever for trying to kidnap a child. But thankfully, that crime was thwarted by the child's mother. Not because she got a, uh, a restraining order. Not because she called police, although she did, and I'm glad she did, because they were able to make the arrest at least. But because she had a firearm on her person to protect herself and her child. And I'm sure that when Shay Lindbergh went to work that morning, she wasn't thinking, today's going to be the day that I've got to draw my gun in self-defense. Probably, if, if she even had a thought about it, it was probably, I hope that I don't have to use this today. We never know when those circumstances will arise. And for most of us, those circumstances will never arise. And, and that's that's a good thing. But again, just as... I keep a fire extinguisher in my kitchen, just as I keep a spare tire in my car and a first aid kit. We prepare ourselves for the potential, right, of being in a bad situation. So that if we do find ourselves in that situation, we are not helpless. We can respond accordingly. And in Shay Lindbergh's case, that meant drawing her firearm telling the pair to drop her son and to go away. And for Shay Lindbergh, that worked. I don't know if justice is going to be done in this case. But at the very least, no harm was done to her or her child. Finally, today's... Uh Actually, no, I guess... Uh yeah, today's a uh, good deed of the day. Got a little confused there. Uh Chicago. You, I'm sure by now, have seen this video of the mob in Chicago uh, over the weekend attacking this couple. Um, but what you may not know is that a good Samaritan actually uh, intervened to save this couple while they were being brutally assaulted. And now the Chicago police are uh, supposedly investigating claims that officers failed to intervene in that attack. Yeah, the good Samaritan says she tried to flag down multiple police officers and they just drove right by. Uh, Lenora Dennis said, it, it kind of made me feel like the keys to the city were being handed over to this mob. She said, I don't want to demonize the kids, but at the same time, there has to be a level of accountability for the things that they were doing. Uh, so it was 20-year-old Ashley Newton and her boyfriend, uh, Devante Garrison Johnson, uh, known as DJ. They were robbed and beaten Saturday night in the 100 block of North Wabash Avenue. Uh, 15 arrests made throughout the night, but no one's been taken into custody specifically with that attack. Lenora Dennis watched Garrison Johnson being assaulted. She said she saw four squad cars speed past, speed, speed past and then uh, she tried to flag down another. She said they looked at me, looked at the situation, and they angled the car around me and then drove off. Uh, the website CWB Chicago, which published video of the attack, uh, first reported that the Chicago police has launched an internal investigation into the accusation that officers did not stop to help. 
Uh, Newton lives in South Carolina. She was visiting her boyfriend. She said they're walking through the crowd and she was shoved. And then her boyfriend came to her defense, turned around and said, quote, don't put your hands on her. Don't push her. She said as soon as they, he said that, everything went crazy. Uh, you could see people punching, kicking Garrison Johnson, who was left bloodied and bruised, according to the Chicago Sun-Times. Um, the uh, couple's shoes, cell phone, credit card stolen. She says they, too, saw police officers drive right by. Garrison Johnson said cops drove right by it, acted like they didn't see anything. Um, Lenora Dennis, the armed city, uh, excuse me, the armed citizen, not the armed citizen, the Good Samaritan in question, said that she was leaving Macy's when she heard Newton's screams and she saw Garrison Johnson being beaten on the ground. So again, she tries to flag down police officers. They don't stop, according to her. Then she said she was able to briefly disperse the crowd or at least get them pushed back before they were turned to continue the attack. She said that's when she pushed the couple into the Macy's department store. She called her husband, had them pick, uh, pick him up in a ride-hailing vehicle, which then took him to a, uh, a police department station uh, on uh, State Street. That's where the couple filed a police report, and then they were taken to a local hospital for treatment. Lenora Dennis uh, lives in Inglewood. She likened her experience to, quote, watching a train wreck. She said it, it felt like they felt invincible, like, they, like we can do this unchecked. And that can't be the thing that happens in Chicago, she said. That can't happen anywhere. That's anarchy. Well, again, in the right place, at the right time, and at risk to herself, Lenora Dennis uh, should be commended. Frankly, she should be getting the key to the city uh, for what she did, stepping up and helping these strangers, Ashley Newton and Devontae Garrison Johnson, avoid this mob. And she's absolutely right. That these types of attacks, these, this type of uh, uh, anarchy should not be happening in Chicago or anywhere else. But unfortunately, because of the, uh, well, for lots of reasons, but I would say including the political environment in Chicago that, that condones behavior like this. You had a state senator, I think it was a state senator, maybe a state rep from the Chicago area. Uh, who, who basically called this a protest. So the kids, why are the kids just out there protesting? No, they weren't. They were brutally assaulting random strangers. And again, were it not for the, I think, heroic actions of Lenora Dennis, uh, Ashley Newton and her boyfriend, uh, DJ Garrison Johnson, could have been far more seriously injured and possibly even killed. So in the right place, at the right time, willing and able to do the right thing, got to thank Lenora Dennis of Chicago, Illinois. And uh, her very, very good deed. All right. That is all the time we've got for you on this edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. I do appreciate you being a part of the program. And uh, make sure you check out BearingArms.com throughout the day. Uh, you know, we're talking with Chuck Michelle yesterday. Got a number of court cases that are sort of teed up, could drop at any moment. So uh, we are waiting with bated breath for uh, some of these cases to be released, both in uh, Illinois, maybe the Fourth Circuit gun ban case out of Maryland. But we've got more news for you as well, including the uh, demise of an attempted gun ban bill in Colorado. Success for anti-gunners in Washington State. Uh, and a lot more. So be sure to check it all out at BarionArms.com. If you like what you see, I'd always encourage you to become a VIP member as well. Just go to BarionArms.com slash subscribe. Use the promo code GUNRIGHTS and you can get a significant savings on your VIP membership. Sorry for saying thanks. We're going to give you exclusive content, news stories, and more you won't find anywhere else because your support matters. And we appreciate it very much. All right. We'll see you back here on Monday, at least for Cam and Company. Barry and Arms, of course, will update throughout the weekend. Until then, be well, be safe, and be free.